A massive explosion rips through the streets of a Ukrainian town. No, this isn't a nuclear bomb, but it's just as terrifying. This is Russia's vacuum bomb. This weapon doesn't rely on radiation to create a nightmare. It sucks the air out, incinerating everything in its path. So how on earth can Ukraine's frontline soldiers or urban centers possibly defend themselves against such devastating destruction? A vacuum bomb isn't your typical explosive, but how does something that doesn't use nuclear material still hit with the force of a small nuke? It turns the air itself into a weapon. First, it releases a cloud of fuel, which seeps into every crack and crevice. Then comes the ignition. Boom! The explosion is brutal, but that's not even the worst part. It creates a vacuum, pulling the air from everything nearby. These bad boys, nicknamed Bunker Busters, have been around since the 1970s. The Russians first used the TOS-1 Solinspiak back in the 1980s during the war in Afghanistan. Next, they deployed vacuum bombs in Chechnya in the 90s, and later in 2016, used them in Syria to dismantle defenses in Aleppo. The US wasn't left out either. They used them to target Afghan caves in 2017. One vacuum bomb is bad enough, but when you start launching dozens from 40 miles away, it's like someone decided to melt an entire battlefield. Russia's thermobaric bombs are already terrifying, but now they've leveled up. How? By equipping these weapons with UMPC modules. No longer do these explosives just fall wherever. They glide through the air with deadly accuracy. Recently, Ukraine learned this the hard way when a guided ODAB 1500 bomb hit Vovchansk, striking from over 63 miles away. Here's where it gets really scary. These bombs don't just rely on brute force. With new guidance systems and pop-out wings, they can be launched from a distance, staying out of the range of most Ukrainian air defenses. They're not just about destruction, they're about precision, hitting key targets like power plants and military positions with chilling accuracy. For Ukraine, this means facing bombs that can reach further, hit harder, and make any defensive position feel like a sitting duck. Picture this, a seemingly standard Soviet bomb, but with fold-out wings and satellite guidance added. This transformation allows it to glide gracefully over long distances, hitting targets with pinpoint accuracy while remaining difficult to detect. It's like giving a vintage car a turbocharged engine. Suddenly, it's not just an old clunker, it's a sleek, powerful machine. But the most compelling aspect? Cost. These glide bombs can be produced for a fraction of the price of more sophisticated munitions, ranging between $20,000 and $30,000 each. Since Russia has tens of thousands of high-explosive bombs in storage, they've found a clever way to maximize their resources. With reports of Russia launching hundreds of glide bombs weekly, it's clear that they're exploiting this low-cost, high-impact approach to saturate the battlefield. But is there any way to stop them? Well, that's the real question. The war rages on, and as Ukrainian forces navigate the treacherous battlefield, the threat of Russian munitions looms ever larger. At the heart of this dilemma lies the Tok 1A Solenspiak, a thermobaric rocket launcher that unleashes destruction with terrifying efficacy. But what makes this weapon so lethal, and why is it gaining notoriety in this conflict? At first glance, the Tok 1A may seem just like another piece of military hardware, but it's what lies within that sets it apart. This weapon fires thermobaric rockets that create a massive fireball upon detonation. The blast wave generated is far more powerful than that of conventional explosives, producing a vacuum effect that can obliterate structures and inflict severe damage on personnel within a significant radius. Many would think it's an unstoppable force. The reality is more nuanced. Ukrainian forces have successfully targeted and destroyed Solinspiak launchers using relatively inexpensive drones turning the tide against this once dreaded weapon. So, how effective are these drones? Ukrainians have adapted remarkably well, utilizing drones that cost as little as $500 to neutralize high-value targets. This raises a critical point. One recent incident in Volchansk highlighted another danger, the ODAB 1500 bomb, a powerful thermobaric weapon that, while not as destructive as its larger cousin, the ODAB 9000, still wreaked havoc on the ground. While Ukraine has made significant strides in destroying launchers like the Solinspiak, the larger challenge remains. Once guided bombs are airborne, how can they be stopped? First, let's address the obvious. Trying to stop the bomb mid-air is, well, a massive challenge. Why? Because these bombs aren't your average projectiles. They're thermobaric weapons, guided to hit strategic targets with terrifying precision. But what if there was a way to shoot them down before they ever reach their destination? Seems like a logical solution, right? 
Let's start with the first possibility, taking out the carrier aircraft. These vacuum bombs don't magically appear out of thin air, they're dropped from planes. And yes, theoretically, F-16 fighter jets could shoot down these planes before they drop their deadly cargo. But here's the catch. You'd need F-16s ready and positioned at the right moment. It's not just about having the planes, it's about getting them into the air in time to intercept the bombers. But here's where the real twist comes in. Russia's aircraft don't just fly in recklessly. They have their own air defenses and often fly at altitudes that make interception tricky. So while taking out the planes is one way to stop the bomb from falling, it's not exactly a foolproof plan. And we're still left wondering, is there another way? Another intriguing option, attacking the source. Enter the Attackums missile. These long-range missiles could strike Russian airfields, destroying the planes before they even take off. Sounds like a brilliant strategy, right? Knock them out while they're still on the ground. But like everything in war, there's a catch. Airfields are heavily defended. Russia knows how valuable these strategic locations are and, naturally, surrounds them with anti-air defenses. So while Attackums offers a powerful punch, getting through those defenses is a whole new challenge. And even if successful, Russia has more than one airbase, meaning it's not a one-and-done deal. So while F-16s and Attackums both offer viable solutions, they come with their own set of risks and limitations. But let's dig deeper. Are there other, less conventional methods? Electronic warfare, EW, might seem like a futuristic solution. Divert the bomb mid-air, confuse its navigation system, and send it off course. But here's the hard truth. The Russians are no amateurs when it comes to electronics. The guidance systems on these bombs are resistant to most EW tactics. Even if you manage to interfere, the bomb doesn't just disappear. It's still falling from the sky, and it'll set to explode wherever it lands. And here's the chilling reality. The Russians are mainly using these bombs against cities. Why? Because even if the bomb misses its intended target, in an urban area, it's almost guaranteed to hit something. A building, a road, infrastructure, and tragically, sometimes civilians. This isn't just about precision, it's about maximizing damage no matter what. Now some might be wondering, why can't we just shoot the bomb itself out of the sky? After all, we have systems like the US's C-RAM which can take out UAVs and incoming threats. Theoretically, a bomb is just another object falling from the sky, right? Well, not exactly. These bombs are significantly smaller than the aircraft that carry them, but still quite hefty. 1,102 pounds. For context, that's roughly the size of a Shahid drone, but with much more weight. While you might think an anti-aircraft missile could take it down, the bomb is simply too small and too fast a target for such systems to reliably hit. Even the best anti-aircraft defenses could miss, and missing isn't an option when the stakes are this high. And what about the CRAM system? It's designed for short-range defense, a mere 1.24 miles. That's great for intercepting drones in a small radius, but modern warfare demands more than a close-range defense system. Plus, let's not forget that CRAM wasn't designed for the intensity of this kind of warfare. Even the US military recognized that, and now they're investing in systems like the Iron Dome, designed to handle more advanced threats. So where does that leave us? Can these bombs be stopped in midair? The harsh reality is that there isn't a straightforward solution. You can't directly intercept these bombs with current technology, and electronic warfare only offers limited success. The best bets are still taking out the aircraft before they drop the bomb, or destroying the launchers and airfields before the bombs even take off. Russia's increasing reliance on thermobaric bombs is a sign of desperation. They're using incredibly destructive weapons like the ODAB-1500 and Solinspiak because they're facing growing resistance from Ukrainian forces. But as powerful as these bombs are, they could push Ukraine to develop even more sophisticated countermeasures. The war in Ukraine has seen constant innovation in military tactics and technology. The question now is, how long before Ukraine finds a way to stop Russia from using these thermobaric bombs and shift the balance once again? Let us know in the comments below and check out our video on how Ukraine destroyed the Russian fleet without a single ship.